Alright guys, welcome to 1995, and last video we were talking about Hercules Legendary Journeys, which was a big success after the TV movies and that short first season and the introduction of a very popular character, Xena. And thankfully, for the good of everyone, they took a chance and made gave that character its own spin-off show, took a chance on this fairly well um, you know, unknown New Zealand actress, and created Xena, Warrior Princess, the little show that became the big show. Over time, Xena took over and became the have. better show by far. And I think Xena became one of the biggest symbols of like 90s girl power. Yes. That was very much like the girl power decade. Yes. You know, like that, like Buffy and Spice Girls and everything like that. But like Xena yeah. was the the true like that like really ushered that in like the hardcore. Princess. Yes, Xena, and that's again that's one of those series that I think even more so than Hercules. Even though that's sort of like where all this stuff originated from. This is the thing that defined that style, I think, and just will live, et live eternally. I think Xena yeah. will continue well beyond after people eventually forget about Hercules, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now, I think Xena will still be around in some form. Oh yeah, definitely. Just like, definitely an eternal series there. Yeah. And continuing the trend of very 90s defining TV, you have the Goosebumps TV series starting, the books had already kind of taken over the elementary school world, and you had these airing alongside Are You Afraid of the Dark, the continuation of that series went on quite a few years, but this was just an unforgettable series, and you started to have... I don't know, to me, I just, I loved they, it as a kid. They were not anywhere it, near... It wasn't as, it was good. definitely campier and goofier. It was kind of I the, it was kind of the... Those are much more forgettable. Yes, it was the lower budget version. Yeah. You know, are, are You Afraid of the Dark? And it started a divide, I don't know if it happened at your elementary school, but there was like, the Goosebumps kids, and the Are You Afraid of the Dark kids. I we, feel like... You ever had that? We had that, I like, I feel like battle. there might have been like, 2% people who like Goosebumps, so... <laughs> really? Oh, we, man, no. Because it was... I think because the popularity of the books, it, the it books just it just really like popular, continued that because that was like you had like scratch and sniff calendars, all all their merchandise. Like no. Goosebumps was a very it just like it was constantly pushing like merchandise and stuff out. Yeah, and, like, but just always taking I don't know. Over. Never. Yeah. I've watched a handful of those, and that's fine with that. Yeah. Don't need to watch them all. Moving into movies, you have Power Rangers the movie. Which was I remember going crazy trying to get all the toys for that, oh and end up getting stuff I... like the the Genesis game. Oh yeah, Power Rangers the movie that was a big deal for that a certain age group. A huge for a certain deal. age, Ivan Ooze like that it was, was cool. good. It's actually a pretty terrible movie when you look back. No, but don't it was cool. It's I, I, I like the redesign of the suits because the first thing they really yes. had their own suits. Yes, it wasn't just using like you know versions of like the Japanese stuff. Like it was, it was really cool. It was, it was a good movie for what it was for the time. But yeah. I can't walk, go back and watch as much as the series itself. No, like, the, the series humor. itself is much more. Yeah, definitely like great. funnier. Yeah. Something that they are doing like a horrible a remake of. Yes, I can't do it on this little cardboard box. But Jumanji. Jumanji. If I had to pick a Robin Williams movie, this would be my no. favorite. I know, Hook, Hook is yours. Hook is absolutely yours. If I had to pick one, Jumanji. I love Jumanji. This was good though. This yes. was phenomenal. I'll never forget that drum sound. Oh. And it is so incredible. And I think it really shows something that's missing from a lot of modern kids' movies. Mm -hmm. You have that long dud. The big action with like the animals coming to life, whatever, that's pretty far into the movie when you really oh, like yeah. rewatch it. But, um, but it contained, like, you were entertained by it. Yeah, it was great. That part. And you got so invested in those characters. Yes. And just, it was it was such a great movie. Like, I absolutely loved that, that movie. That was a really good movie. Just, uh, again, that's one that I think will stick ending. with you forever. <gasps> ending was incredible. Like, it, it was set up so well. And we don't need this horrible sequel that's coming out. It's not a sequel. Nothing's... It's... I don't know what it is. It's just... Running around yeah. the woods. 1995 was also a huge year for another TV series. And something I remember as the launch of a network. Which was a, it's a weird thing to think about now, but the idea of network television used to be a huge idea. And yeah. this is the one I remember like from being like the launch of UPN with yeah. Star Trek Voyager. Getting a third, this is the heyday, this is when you know, Next Generation had just ended and Deep Space Nine was still going and I was overlapping with another series and the 90s was just like packed with Star Trek. It was almost like yeah. Star Trek Overload. And it, I just, did you guys watch Caretaker when it first aired yeah, in UPN? Yes. Because it was like the, the whole idea, event. yeah, the whole idea with the launch of a new network, UPN, with its own Star Trek series, and yeah. like, oh man, I just, I very fondly remember Caretaker, just because it was a, such a big deal, the whole family yeah. sitting around and watching it. And, and it was a cool episode. Yeah, it worked really well. It's one of the better premiere episodes, I think, because uh, a lot of times it just tend to be kind of weak, but no, it was it was really good, and it launched 
one of my favorite Star Trek series. Like, even though it has yeah. a lot of faults later, as you get later on in the series. But at the beginning, it had yeah. so much potential. Oh yeah, yeah, and it was still, it was still good. It was and good. It, just, it, was, it was, good. was just, I think the launch itself was the most memorable part of Voyager to me. It was just that was such a huge deal to, to see that at the time. And Chakotay. Yes, Chakotay was Chakotay. great. Yeah, and and two again moving into it was. A, the 90s and it was that decade of girl power and you got your first female captain with Catherine Janeway. But it wasn't like... But it wasn't in your face. It yeah, wasn't like, like now, I'm a girl, listen to me. It was just like, she just happened to be female. And yeah. that was the brilliance. Which is that girl was, power. That that is, yes, exactly. That's that, legitimate girl that was, power. That was the great stuff. It was just like, I am a badass. I am Buffy. I am Xena. I am, I am Captain Janeway. Like, you know, like yeah. I am and I just happen to be female. Yeah. Like, it's, that's not the defining characteristic. The defining no. characteristic is that this is a really interesting, strong character yes. who just happens to be female. Like, that was, like, the true, like, to me, yeah. that's just, like, that was a beautiful thing. And, like, yeah. I love that. And, oh, yeah. And keeping that similar vein, for me, I guess, was the launch of the one of the greatest albums of all time. My one favorite of your other band. Wives. Yes. Tragic Kingdom by No Doubt. And this one is particularly memorable because I think this is when they really achieved true mainstream success. Before there were singles and things like that, but I think this is the first um, album that really blew everything away. And then uh, Just a Girl, I mean, that was like one of the yeah. 90s anthems. So I think this is the real, this is the first time that I remember other people talking about No Doubt. Like yeah. I was a big No Doubt fan, but there weren't that many other people. This was when people, I think, went crazy. Like Don't Speak, that's on the same album too. Yeah. So that again, just like fit that vein of things like that. And moving on into, I guess we'll do some movies next here, a whole bunch more. Toy Story, oh. grab that here. Yes. The kind of launch of Pixar into Which the mainstream. Right down there. You can't see it because it's not a big deal yet. Because it's Pixar. It says Pixar. Oh, Pixar, yeah. Teeny, tiny bit. Yeah, not a huge deal yet. But care. again, some more 90s Tim Allen, of course. Like, of that was course. a great decade for him. But this was a very memorable movie. If you oh were a, a kid, like we actually watched that, I remember I remember the year it came on VHS, we watched that on the last day of school, because it was one of those, like, the school's done, you have that half day before you're just yeah. kind of we just watched Toy Story, like, Toy Story was such a big deal when that came out, and the really idea was. of that level of computer animation at the time, too, was a big oh, deal. Yeah. Just uh, a very, like, timeless classic the movie. The graphics! Yes. But that was a good one. Um, one that was probably not so good, you have oh, the yeah. first, we'll cover here, the first Mortal Kombat movie. So that Video games seem to not translate well translate. into movies, but this is one of, the first Mortal Kombat is one of the best that actually did, as far as like translating into a movie. It's good, can't be fun. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. Like, why yeah. would you make but that it, into it's a It's good, movie? can't be fun, and it has an amazing soundtrack. Like, you gotta admit that. That is a pumping soundtrack. That is great. It's but weird thing yeah. to be, someone was yes. like, hmm, this might be fun. Yeah. Like, it, it, really? The first one worked out really well. And as a side note, I really want to get the Laserdisc for that because it has an exclusive commentary track that's not on the DVD. Of course. But just looking for that. And, oh my gosh, this is a personal on one. On the flip side. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> if you a watch, if you watched me open that when it came out, do you remember that? Like all those, when all the free ones. I love this movie. Oh, everyone so much. loves this movie. It's beautiful. This is not just for girls. Yeah. The original one with Shirley Temple's oh. can't admit. No, like, this it wasn't is, that great. This, this is, is little, gorgeous. This is this is the right from start to finish. This is amazing. This is one of those movies that I will cry every time. Everything like, cries. Absolutely, you, you cannot cry. cry. Like it's just, it's incredible. Oh. Yeah, that is it's an absolutely beautiful. amazing movie. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I love this. This is definitely so much. classic. I, I thought this was the '80s too. No, oh, are you kidding me? No, no. I love that's that's one I actually I want a double of. I'm not even kidding. I want oh, a double yeah. of that movie. It's amazing. Are there other versions of that? I don't know. There are other printings. I'll have to check. But that and another one, another great '90s classic that I know oh, you love. Oh my god, Casper. Casper, like this. This is when I think of. I don't think of the old cartoon when I think of no, Casper, and no. I don't think of future ones like Casper and Wendy and things like that with Hilary Duff. And like this is Casper. Wendy. This movie. Yeah. When, whatever. This is Casper. <laughs> oh. But yeah, this was a great, oh. great movie. I didn't like him when he was himself. I like him as a ghost. Because you don't like, like blondes. I know. I was, was like, again, it was the other one. I he was looks like, like super he looks, disappointed. Doesn't he, look like, doesn't he look like the kid version of the Beast yeah. when, he, when he grows up? Like he looks like the. Like, oh my god. Doesn't he? Look, even what he's wearing. He's the kid version of the Beast. Oh, that's why I don't like yeah. him. Yeah, but... Oh, but Kat was but, amazing. I loved her. Yes, and her dad great. was hot. Her dad was super hot. <laughs> it was a fantastic like movie. It was, it was really, really good movie. I loved that. Yeah. Perfect sense of humor oh, to it, too. It was like, beautiful. Um, that was a very... And it was a good, like, feel-good movie in a way, yes. too. But it was that was a really great movie. I love that one. That was. And I think as far as movies, um, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to save that one for a little bit. First, we'll talk about one of my favorite anime series of all time that eventually was one of the things that brought 
non-DBZ anime to America. <laughs> Gundam Wing launched this year, my favorite Gundam series by far. That The first one I saw, and I think it's a huge part of why it's my favorite, but that launched me into the obsession of like Mecha. Like, just, <laughs> uh, like, uh, that made me search out everything. Like, that's when I actually didn't see like Robotech and stuff like that. Um, more than just the random VHS I'd find at you know, Blockbuster. Yeah. That made me actually like search out the whole thing. Like this was the thing, that aside from just seeing random stuff, yeah. made me like actively search out stuff. Like Gundam Wing, oh, amazing. Hero Yui, oh man, great. I absolutely love it. Um, and the last thing as far as movie-wise, so I was going to save the last thing is, is the last one. The first Jackie Chan movie I ever saw and ended up buying Aww. it um, on VHS with like my allowance money and oh, this was pennies. this was the start of a lifelong obsession. Uh, we have entire shelves dedicated just to Jackie. We'll have movies separated into like you have like comedy, sci-fi, whatever. Jackie, Jackie shelf. Jackie shelf. But this was the first one, Rumble in the Bronx, that oh my gosh, absolutely I absolutely love this one. And this is when I went back and every video store in our area I went and tried to find all like the old like Police Story, Project A, all the 80s ones, um, and this started an obsession with me, which is with Hong Kong movies in general, not just Jackie yeah. Chan, but like this was the beginning of an obsession. Like this is such a good movie, and a, a, this amazing from the Bronx, but just an absolute astounding movie. And then it was also a really big year for video games. A, a game, a, in fact, a year that would change video games forever. Forever. 1995, thanks to. Nintendo being kind of a dick and <laughs> screwing over Sony, they ended up basically creating their greatest enemy. <laughs> the company that would pretty much take over gaming and change the face of gaming forever. The original PlayStation. And this changed my life. The original PlayStation. <laughs> Religion of PlayStation. Oh my gosh. The even though like I love Sega so much now and like Dreamcast and well, like you had a lot of Nintendo this just systems. a lot of yeah, I had all the Nintendo systems. Nintendo. I had them. I just didn't have very much for them. Because this is all I bought. <laughs> and the the like basically the end of the 90s and the early early part of 2000s before I got a PS2, I stopped buying pretty much anything that wasn't didn't go in the PlayStation. Well, and you said that this you had the shelf. Yes, and this, this actually original shelf. This like you can't see the whole thing, but like this from top to bottom was just original PlayStation back then. I'll, I don't think my PS1 collection will ever be what it used to be, but like because that's all I well, did. And when like SquareSoft, yeah, you bought when, it. And when like Blockbuster came in and our local video store went out of business, they also were getting rid of the PlayStation games. That's so weird you didn't games. have Blockbuster. No, we didn't have until like weird. the very end of the 90s, because we had a several um, local ones, so it wasn't really a market yeah. for it. We until, had Blockbuster yeah. like right down the road. But, so like I went in and I bought out all their PlayStation games, because they were really just like liquidating everything. But yeah. like original PlayStation, and before this, I was actually more of a PC Mac guy. Yeah. I wasn't a big, con like I had consoles, but I didn't have that many games for them usually, and they were like an occasional thing. Um, and I got the N64 or stuff like that or whatever, but like so many franchises started here and the RPGs, I mean... I love I, the color. I oh yeah. Too. I mean, if it said Squaresoft on the box, I bought it for this. Like, it, it didn't, I didn't even, like, I didn't even look at it. I mean, I'd never heard of it before. It says Squaresoft. All right, here you go. But like, this uh, endlessly. The original PlayStation, just incredible. One of my favorite systems of all time and easily my most played system, even though it's not my number one, like it's my most played system and will forever be, the original PlayStation. And it was another great year because a system that I never had growing up, but always coveted, also came out that year. The Sega Saturn also came out that year. The system that probably in, should have won that generation, really. Yeah. Like if Sega hadn't messed up the North American launch so badly and given Sony the opportunity to take over, the Saturn, I think, would have dominated because the N64 had such a great domination within its certain areas of like 3D platformers, like Nintendo, whatever. But the fact that it wasn't CD based just killed so much third party support. Yeah. The N64 had virtually no third party support. Like, there, yeah. there were more fighting games released on like the Saturn than there were games on the N64. <laughs> but the, the PS1 took over because it took over everywhere while the Saturn stayed very much a successful Japanese system that didn't do well outside of Japan became sort of like now it's a huge collector system. I didn't Game even know so it existed. Expensive. I wanted it and I knew I one it. person who had it but I never got it because I couldn't afford it because I had the PS1 and I also got the N64 and then I was just buying PS1 games. There's no way I could save up enough money to buy another system. So I didn't get this till just a few years ago. Yeah. And I absolutely, and I always wanted it, but like, it's an amazing system. And I feel like I would have loved it, yeah. if it, like, if I knew it existed, oh, yeah. we would have gotten it. absolutely incredible. And by the time I was about to get one, then the Dreamcast was out, so I kind of skipped it and got the Dreamcast. 
Yeah. So this is one that it was not till recently I got to really truly experience. It's amazing. I love this system. I love the way it looks. Yeah. It's oh, it's so incredible, beautiful. and it's a beast. This to me is like such a hearty system, and just an amazing system and a missed opportunity. I really think that I mean, and all the bad decisions they made with all their Sega attachments for the Genesis, and then business decisions with launching this, and like all that really set them up to fail. Even though the Dreamcast was successful, they couldn't maintain yeah. it. And I think this was sort of the beginning of the end in many ways with the Saturn, but. If just Sega had handled this better, I think we could still have Sega today instead of Sony or instead of Microsoft. Like, wasn't really... Shenmue supposed to be out on there? Yes, Shenmue was originally supposed to be out, being made originally for the Saturn. Do you think it would have done better if Shenmue was on there? No, it came, it came too late. I think Sega made... they realized their mistakes and they had messed up so much with the Saturn that there's no way they could revitalize it. The PlayStation had taken over the world and the N64 had like its niche that it took over and there was no room for the Saturn really. Mm -hmm. That. I think they, they made the right decision with bringing out the Dreamcast then and destroying everything, but topic for another video on why they messed up with the Dreamcast, you know, but <laughs> anyway, so for video games, also it was a big year for older systems too. It wasn't just the launch of great new consoles. Nintendo's new system, which at the time was still the Ultra 64, it wasn't, you know, that wasn't out yet, so there's still good games coming out on the Super Nintendo. This was the year that we got Chrono Trigger. One of the greatest RPGs of all time, I don't think that's arguable, like I think <laughs> I think whether or not it's your favorite is very arguable, it's not my favorite. Yeah. but. It is incredibly <gasps> great. Yeah, it's an incredible game, and I actually will be in the minority and say I like Chrono Cross better than Chrono Trigger. But <laughs> Chrono Trigger is a, I think it's a very timeless game. It's not just good, but I think the combination of having of the time travel elements and that timeless art style and the great combat and the idea that there's so many different endings and stuff, I think that makes it a very timeless game because you just constantly like, be able to replay, and it doesn't feel old. Yeah. It feels classic. So that's another one. Uh, there was also a launch of one of my favorite series, Twisted Metal, which I originally played on the PC and then moved into more PS1. Um, but yeah, the first Twisted Metal, really quirky car combat and just really interesting. That's so random. Yeah. And the title that, again, I said uh, another video that I really was into, Bungie and Blizzard. And this was the year that I really got into my Blizzard like obsession really for a few years like it was I played Warcraft, Warcraft Orcs and Humans and it was really good but this was the year that we got Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness and that changed the game that was to me they with that one beat out things like Command and Conquer and like all the competition this was them beginning their takeover of that genre in the late 90s to early 2000s Warcraft 2 so that was an incredible year I think that's it for that year that we had yeah. let us know some of your memories of 1995 because again Every decade there's so much to talk about, but yeah, this was one incredible year.